Welcome back to the School of Calisthenics, Jacko here. And in today's video, we're looking at ring muscle ups. And this is a video analysis done by me with one of the students inside our virtual classroom. You're gonna see uh, the coaching techniques that we use and tips that we give. Hopefully, if you're working on your ring muscle ups or even your ring dips, you'll look at how we problem solve for Nick on the call. You'll literally hear the interaction between me and him coaching him through it. And I really hope that some of the things that he was needing to work on as often the same things I see a lot of you out there were needing to work on as well. So I really hope that seeing the coaching going on live during this next video or during this video session and analysis is going to help you with your ring muscle up. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy, take some notes and hopefully this is going to help you. If you haven't yet subscribed, click on the subscribe somewhere down below. And uh, if you are interested in joining our virtual classroom, then the details are in the description below and you can get access to some of this type of coaching and feedback. But for now, hope this helps you with your ring muscle. Here is Nick with his brand new galvanized rig, freestanding rig from the school class ends. You've got it set up, the, the crossbar, the highest position. We've got the ring set up and this is ring muscle up. We'll just play, let's play one through at real speed. Um, so setting full script, turning the hands out, and then coming through, bosh, up, and finishing the ring muscle up there. And then also being able to control back down, and being able to control back down and maintain that false grip um, that we see on each of the rings there is key. On the way down, it's quite difficult to maintain that false grip if you're going to want to go into a second rep. So doing a good job to control the reverse or the eccentric part of that. So let's just go back to the beginning and um, setting up of um, setting up a false grip, I think looks great. The turn out of the bottom, perfect. Um, one thing, um, oh, we'll come, we'll come to this later. Let, we'll, we'll come, I'm going to come back to something about the, about what happens at the start. Um, we're just going to slow it down a smidge as we go through, and we may we may be we may be able to see some stuff and we may be able to break it down. So first and foremost is getting up, and um, you know. There is, um, we're getting, we're redefining our process. Whenever anyone's at the point where they still haven't managed to fully get through the rings yet without a band, like it feels impossible. So just that first point of being able to, to being able to um, pull thumb to chest, drive the chest between the rings, and then get in the bottom of that deep ring dip, like then, you know, as long as you've worked on your dip strength, once you've got to there, then you're fine. Like, you know that after this, I'm just pressing out into the top of that dip position. Yeah, the hard bit is, let's just break it down a smidge for people. The hard bit is, first, first the hard bit is the false grip. Putting your uh, hand over the top of the ring so that the, the base of the palm is resting on the top of the ring rather than the ring just resting in the fingers. It takes a lot of wrist flexion. Um, let me zoom in there. We can, should be able to see um, what's going on over here. Wrist inflection. The shoulder here is actually to allow those rings to turn out for that start position. We're actually at the shoulder here, internally rotating shoulder whilst overhead, but that's the challenging position for the shoulder in terms of mobility and challenging the wrist mobility or flexibility whilst maintaining grip in that position where the flexors are shortened and we're gripping. So it is a challenge. So to build up that strength and the position to be able to do that on the ring muscle up is uh, is critical is key um, it's doing and so nick's doing a great job on that what we want to see is pull is strong and fast which is great we're trying to get the thumb to the chest before um so the like the line of where sort of like nipple line of where the chest will be if we look in front on we will see this front on later um of getting the thumb to chest before anything happens now those that are um well, let's, let's say those that are like diligent or hawk like, like, like if I make a mistake in the kitchen doing something, like Mrs. Jacko is going to see that. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, like it gets seen. So those that have got like that hawk eye view are going to notice something is happening on this left hand side, whereas nothing's happened on the right hand side yet. One of the big mistakes people make with the ring muscle up is they enter the transition too early or try to enter the transition too early. So they start turning the rings whilst their body is still behind it. Whereas what we want to see is that um, we go thumb to chest, and if we look at just look at the difference between this left hand side and this right hand side. On the right, the ring doesn't move hardly at all, and the left 
it's starting to go and want to go out. So that little bit there, just starting to turn a smidge more and the shoulder a tiny bit, tiny bit elevated, just a little bit. Now, I don't know if you've got like one shoulder, Nick is, is live on this now. Nick, have you got, um, have you ever had, is like one shoulder a little bit more niggly than the other or tighter than the other? Do you have any differences between them? That's common to have differences. Yeah, so I'd say I'm right, my right side is much stronger than my left side. Yeah. Uh, and I guess something outside of the gym environment where you've got, obviously you can do free weights to sort of level up a bit, I guess. I guess I've struggled with trying to work out how I can level up the strength between the sides of my body. Um, and I'm, I think I'm dominating a lot with my right and that's causing me some shoulder issues. Yeah. Um, I've worked, I've worked a lot on my, um, mobility around my shoulders yeah uh, wall angels a lot of um uh you know hockey ball getting in loosening up the muscles stretching uh, and i've got good quite good um shoulder flexibility but i'm just i seem to be overloading a certain point on my right shoulder where i think you call it the rotator cuff i put it in my note to you um yeah. it, if i try and train the ring muscle up it then triggers a lot of pain in that tendon or joint or whatever it is in that right shoulder which i don't get through any other exercise so i can do handstands for example practice that pretty much you know yeah. full session no issues but as soon as i start on the rings it becomes noticeable that i'm doing something that's not quite right yeah so that was most likely be around just what's going on at these what's going in like you're not going to see it that well in the with a with the black t-shirt but what's going on with that shoulder blade position and therefore then the, the head of the humerus. So we get that like issues around the shoulder, around the rotator cuff and pinching of some of the tendons, potentially supraspinatus or bicep tendon around the front, it, that sort of impingement feeling. When, the, when we're sort of like throwing the shoulder forward a little bit and we're losing that um, stability of the scapula nicely riding on the rib cage and then that changing of the humeral head position, so your upper arm, that basically like coming forward and closing off the space in the in the glomerular humeral joint, so around the front of the shoulder, basically like the classic point on on your shoulder. So the the ring muscle up does certainly challenge your ability to be able to maintain a good shoulder um, position because you're going from that when you go from that pull like into the dip fast, you're throwing your body forward, but we want to try and maintain control of the shoulder blade. So I'm going to give you some stuff. Let's just go finish off the analysis and I'll give you some something recommendation for um, obviously like smoothing that out so you're not getting any of that. Um, because what we don't want, like celebrating our being able to do muscle-ups is, is great, but we don't hmm. want to be like getting injured or being in pain because of it. Um, can, I, can I just ask a question? So what I found interesting about this slowing it down was that, I'm clearly sort of going up quicker on my right, even though my, sorry, on my left, even though my right is my dominant yeah. arm. So and my good. thought around that, is it because I'm then trying to lean over and use the dominant arm to press out yeah. rather than that's do exactly, it evenly? That's why I wanted to ask. There's a couple, like, so sometimes if we're, if you think when we're, 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 when we go through that transition, the, the arm is going into shoulder extension, so the arm going behind, but, and we're getting that internal rotation of the shoulder, which is a little bit like that throwing action, if you, I'm doing it left hand, like if I'm throwing a, a tennis ball or something and I'm right-handed, and we're way faster and way better at like just that firing pattern of like throwing that arm into that fast internal rotation. Um, so sometimes people, if they're right-hand dominant, will throw, well, the, you'll see the right side go first because it's just used to that pattern. So that's one scenario. The other scenario is, as you've got, have you found, and uh, I've actually experienced this myself personally, that the having an issue on one side, on the, on the, I've got like on, on one side where, like from old like rugby injury, where you then use the, the stronger side, so your right side where you're stronger, you're holding on to that side for longer at this point, like we can see the difference there. At this point, we've, we've, the left shoulder is gone. And a couple of things that it's done, it's elevated, so it's gone up. Um, and then if we saw this side on, it's like, it'd be sort of like diving, like diving, like rounding forward, so like protracting. Um, now that could partly be some like, um, uh, like mobility work, like I said, you've been working on, that if it's tight, 
going into shoulder extension, it has to like, th the arm sort of like, th the body will always find the path of least resistance. So the shoulder throw, shoulder blade comes out into that protraction and elevation and just tries to find some stability in the shape that you're trying to make. So I think that that's what you're sort of finding on there. And we see a, if we, um, if we look at the full body position, we see um, a shift in, so we pull it, so at this point we're, we're symmetrical, and then we start shifting over a little bit now, and then if we see it now, that left side's gone up, and obviously like the hip, the hip has to come with it as well, it, it's, your hips are connected to, to the rest of your body, so we see this like change in the full um, sort of body position, and then as you come through, we can get the, the legs have to, um, the legs come back, to like readjust underneath and we saw that sort of like swaying until you've got yourself in your um straight position then and then and then coming up to the top so it, it's very um it's not massive it's i would say that it's actually like quite small but the big thing being that you said that you know getting some discomfort around the shoulder there that it, that is a sign that you that you, we need to do something to to help sort that out now if we see it from the um from the front um, we're going to potentially see a similar. So setup wise, great. We see the same. We see the same type of scenario. And you see it even. So is that the camera's not playing tricks on me? That's your left side, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> left side, right? <laughs> left side, great. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not like the camera's on mirror mirror mode or anything like that. So um, you saw in the bottom of because you've done you've sent me one of just dips as well. When you're at the bottom. Can you see the difference in space over here? Yeah, yeah. And then how yeah. it, it, it looks it looks cramped and a bit sort of we want to keep the rings close to us, but it looks like uncomfortable on that on that left hand side and that the and that we've we've shifted over like over there um because of it. So clearly there is a difference going on between the two. Um, so would you say I'm too too close on the left hand side then or not close enough on the right hand side? Yeah, it's almost like you just you 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 just we just we want to even it up between the two, um, and I would I would look at so a couple of things that I would do from a like let's break it down because we can see you can see on like so there's a good example look just stopping it exactly there is perfect like look at that elbow stayed underneath still but the left side's already gone yeah. Yeah, so the left side. So one of the one of the main things would be would just be like um, go back to a bat. Like when you're going to do, if you're wanting to go through any full things, um, it always needs to be pain free. Like anything that we do needs to be pain free. So if you can, you go with the band as a cradle underneath you. So the band would sort of um, the band would be underneath the rings and work as a cradle underneath there. Like hand on each one goes underneath like the the bum or the hamstrings and just provide you with some assistance. So that you can do it then smoothly, because there's two things. There's two things. Well, let's say three things. Um, one's like a one part of it's like just a pattern and habit. Have you developed a pattern now that over time you've carried on doing it like this, and the left always goes first? And if the left is always going first on this, like we're seeing that like that that chink in the in the body line because we're shifting we're shifting weight. And we're going early on that left side. And when we did go early on that left side, the other thing would be, like, can you see that that's? If we zoom in a bit, can we see that 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 shoulder is higher than on that one? Yeah. Yeah. And then that that hip line has to go on the same thing as well. So that's why like your the lower body, the bit that you're seeing through your trunk and your lower body is purely in relation to what's going on in the rings, um, and and at your shoulders. Like, so if you sort the shoulder, if you sort the left shoulder out. The, um, the 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 rest of the body underneath will, will stay in in nice alignment. So the band will give you assistance, so you can make it nice and smooth. That's what that's where we want to get to. So keep it nice and keep it smooth and pain free, and give yourself load to start with. Give yourself like plenty of resistance on it, so that you can literally come through thumb to chest, transition through into that nice uh, ring dip, and then press out. You don't even have to worry about the pressing out bit. I just want you to get really smooth at changing that habit that the left is going first. Now, if with the band, it still is going early or it's still causing you discomfort, then we definitely need to address what's actually going on at that shoulder. 
and I would probably do a little bit of this as well, particularly prep work of um, just like what is the shoulder um, shoulder mobility like into shoulder extensions. So that's when your arm goes behind your back, like behind you. Yeah. And what is um, what is your internal rotation at the shoulder like? And the big thing being, can you maintain good scapular position on your rib cage whilst you're going into that shoulder extension and whilst you're doing some internal rotation work yeah so um it's not just can you do a wall angel and at the bottom of the wall angel come down can you see me on the screen if you come down yeah like do that internal rotation if i do that internal rotation and boom the shoulder comes forward that's what you're doing on the moment so on the on your good side you're coming and the equivalent would be internal rotation there you can see how my shoulder is staying in a nice position mm -hmm. whereas on this side it's like to go look to, you're like running out of range so rather than to get, rather my hand coming down because I'm internally rotating the humeral head, you're coming to here and then it's like, I'm going to get the hand down by going there. And by that, I'm elevating the scapula and protracting it round. And that just closes off all that space around there. That makes sense? So it's, yeah. hand, it's being able to do the internal rotation and the shoulder extension. Like when I go into shoulder extension, I'm going behind me. Is my shoulder coming up and is it rounding forward to find that range for me? Because I'm actually lacking true um shoulder extension and i'm hiding behind um sh uh, shoulder blade elevation and protraction to allow me to create some position where the hand is going behind me and looking the arms looking like it's in more shoulder extension but it's not actually true shoulder um extension so some work on that as your prep work and i would compare the left and right and i feel it's going to be a lot for you around yeah, some like some rotator cuff strength will definitely help. So in the uh, muscle up program, we've got some banded external rotation and banded internal rotation work that you, you there will be in module one. But you might have to maybe you've stopped doing that. You need to go back to that little bit of prep work. Um, yeah. Definitely that that will help. But there's going to be I think there's that habit of the left hand going first that we need to break. Uh, not break <laughs> we need to break the habit um yeah. and then there's so so not trying to do stuff that's too hard to start with these this will then come back easy um so that's the habit and then there's like the strength but in the like strength in the control of your scapula your shoulder blade position because if we go to your uh dips it's not like you've got a it's not like you've got a problem with strength like you can do you can do dips and they're nice and they're well controlled. So slowly down, rings are staying nice and close, driving up. So you look at the dip. Do, do you see the difference between that dip and getting out of your ring trans? After you've done the ring transition, to get out of that dip, it's the same as what you've just done there. But it yeah. looks quite different after you've done a transition, didn't it? Does that makes sense? Yeah. So I saw I, I sent the dip one because if you well, you probably see the grimace on my face when I yeah. get to the bottom. There you go. There, there it was. Um, there's a point in the push right there where I, I get that real sharp pain in my shoulder. Yeah, so I um, think if you see now the position of the right compared to the position of the left, that what it's gonna so because of where you're in now in that position, if you're in the bottom of that dip, the shoulder here um, is then. It's like the line of them, you're, it's hard to see with your t-shirt a little bit, but like I can, so things that are like the rings are the same distance from your hands, which is obviously better and you're in the middle and your body's straight, so much better. But there's a difference of like the arm behind the back of the body, where that elbow is in that shoulder extension on that side compared to here. And there's a little bit of, I know I said like shoulder, shoulder elevation but when you're in this bottom of this dip what that shoulder elevation looks like is this wanting to like dive down and forward it's like up and it's protracted rounded forward so it look it gives that like sloping down sort of feel or look to it and then this elbow tends to kick out more to the side whereas can you see that on this side that elbow looks like it's looks like it's sort of like going on a straight line like back behind you rather than wanting to like um rather than wanting to kick out to the side so much where that one is a little bit so it's it's a it's small differences but it's going to make a difference 
particularly if you know once you once you start pinching some of those tendons that are running around the front of that shoulder they get a little bit inflamed and then it's going to take less to, to 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 catch them again if that makes sense or to irritate them again so we need to first and foremost to take take out anything that's irritating it because carrying on irritating it is is not going to let it go away and then it's being able to control so as i go down to the bottom of that dip i'm thinking about maintaining width across my collarbones whereas because when i let when i let the shoulders round forward and in i'm losing all that space and then i'm losing space in front of the shoulders because you do look at the body yeah, with that grim where that yeah. grip is there, like that's telling us something. You can see the the where this shoulder here is already wanting to come down and forward, which is in a dip. Do it make sense that in in the dip it's like it's up and round, and then when I come forward into there, it looks like it's lower, even though it's still elevation and protraction. Yeah, um, and when you're when you're in the very bottom of that. Uh, like it has potential to be really like cramped whereas i want you to think about trying to create space width across through your collarbones that will help you maintain some more retraction of the shoulder blades rather than that left one wanting to round and dive forward yeah and then there's yeah. going to be some like some mid lower trap sort of serratus work to maintain to stop it from like driving up you know, it might be that you do you find that left trap is like sort of might be quite um, tight and engaged potentially on that, that upper trap on that left side if because he's potentially doing a bit of the work to try and pull that shoulder up because he's just trying to help out. He's like <laughs> just trying to just trying to help you. I'm just trying to keep this keep this in, in some sort of uh, stable position. Yeah, trap sort of going into my neck can be quite tight. Yeah, sometimes I, 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 didn't, I didn't know whether that was training or. You know, sitting down at a desk for well, nine you, hours a day. Do you get more on the left than you do the right? Yes. I think that's related to this. Right. So uh, a little bit of soft tissue work, massage ball in the upper trap. Yeah. And then yeah. your, um, you know, things like with like in our in our sort of like basic movement prep stuff, we've got like our YTWs. They're yes. still fantastic for maintaining and feeling that positioning of the shoulder blade. Your W is very much related to um that bottom of that dip position you could take that you could go your your y is going to be good for like serratus and mid and, and mid lower trap um when you go into your w you could also what would be a really this would actually be really good one. we haven't got a tutorial for this but it's, it's going, I'm just going to show you it's going to be super easy i'm going to go make myself um big because this is going to be i'm going to quite like this one and if i stop that screen share you see big right so yep. um, when you go into your w and imagine I'm lying flat down on the floor. You go into my, I go into my W position. My external rotation is trying to get the hand up and the elbow down. But then from there, can you squeeze the elbows back and squeeze your hand underneath you and take them all the way behind you without that right. rounding forward? Because that motion from there into, because that's then you going um into shoulder extension and then as then comes down with some internal rotation and can you take yourself into extension very little loads it's just going to be that your arm the weight of your arm against gravity as you're lying flat down on the floor so literally just slide them underneath and yeah yeah w position then i'm going to look where the elbow goes it goes like straight behind me and then now it's like i'm in the bottom of that dip and it's like can i push yeah. it back and extend it and maintain this there rather than letting it come into here so I right, want to, be able okay. to keep it in a nice position rather than it rounding up and rounding forward. Yeah? Yeah. That was good. That was a real dissection of, uh, of the ring muscle up and, and ring dips. But um, yeah, it's well, I'm, <laughs> I don't like the fact that you're saying you were getting some pain, discomfort or impingement type of feeling around the front. So we need to make sure that we definitely stay away from anything that is causing that. Just go back a couple of steps and um and then that that will be fine you know, like the strength you've got in your pull and the strength in your dips like think how easy there is a thing called pain inhibition so the fact that they feel you've got like some discomfort at the bottom of that dip it's going to be robbing you of some of some strength of that so once you get rid of that and go back to your dips it's going to feel flipping easy and then those muscle-ups will be smooth yeah, yeah. your other option is just never do muscle-ups <laughs> 
depends where you want to do. Yeah, there's yeah. not necessarily an option, people, if they want to go to. That's um, not redefining my impossible, though, is it? So. <laughs> I know, exactly. exactly. I'm just throwing it out there. Is, that is, <laughs> there's one of the options. Um, cool. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, mate. So thanks for watching. I hope that's helped you with your ring muscle ups or your ring dips. It's time, ring nips, ring dips. Uh, it's time now for you to go and put some of those things into place if it was relevant for you. If you have any other questions about ring muscle ups, dips, or anything to do with your kind sense training tool, get in the comments below. Ask any of those questions. If you want to email me directly, my email is david at scorecardsense.com. If you haven't subscribed, click on that bad boy up there. And let's get you subscribed in so you don't miss out on any of the other videos. And if you want to say, as I said at the beginning, if you want to be part um, of the virtual classroom, VIP memberships get you access to this type of coaching that Nick had in here. And um, if you uh, just looking for some of the programs to follow, it's all in there inside our virtual classroom. Week by week programs to follow, help from coaches, uh, everything you're gonna need to help you redefine your impossible inside the virtual classroom. Class dismissed.